Around 80% of all animals on Earth are insects. But how well do you know their world? Let's see if you can guess whether these amazing facts are myths or true. Here's the first one. Cockroaches can run on two legs, just like humans. Myth or true? That's correct. Cockroaches don't do it just for fun. Running on two legs is more energy efficient because it's easier for their little brains to process. If you take a closer look at the cockroach, you're going to spot that all pairs of legs have different lengths. This creates unnecessary drag when the cockroach needs to reach high speeds. Their nervous system can get overloaded and confused by trying to control all three pairs of legs. So, it chooses to move just one pair, the rear legs that use energy most efficiently. Check this out. A full moon makes mosquitoes bite 500% more actively. Myth or true? True. Just like werewolves, mosquitoes get fierce when the moon is full. That's because they use visual cues and receptors to spot their next dinner. And it's way easier to do so when the moon is full. Mosquitoes spot movement by detecting infrared radiation emitted by warm bodies at distances of up to 115 feet. Salt marsh mosquitoes took this to the next level. They're such gourmets that they can travel up to 40 miles just for the sake of eating. Only male mosquitoes bite. Does it sound real? Nope. In fact, only female mosquitoes do bite people or animals because they need a blood meal to produce eggs. On average, they take in about five millionths of a liter during one feeding. Meanwhile, male mosquitoes prefer eating plant juices, such as nectar. It's enough for them to get the necessary sugar and boost their energy levels. And since males don't bite, they cannot transmit diseases. But females, on the other hand, can get infected with germs when they bite sick people or animals. Here's the next fact. Alligator ticks are called so because they can reach the size of a crocodile. True or false? That's false, but still, it's the largest aquatic insect on Earth. According to Guinness World Records, toe biter, or sometimes called an alligator tick, can grow to be more than four inches long, which is basically the size of an average leaf. They can be found around the world, but they're especially common in North America. Toe biters perfectly blend into the landscape because their dark brown body mimics the leaves of the wetlands. They're predatory by nature. Usually they eat small tadpoles and other insects, but sometimes they take down bigger prey like snakes and even turtles. Those who experienced meeting these creatures claim that their bites are the most painful injuries a human can suffer. Flies can poison your food just by landing on it. Myth or true? Unfortunately, that's true. Not only are flies annoying, but they also regurgitate some of their stomach contents when they land on your food. And house flies are just one of many fly species that do so. Ugh. It happens because flies don't have teeth. Instead of chewing, they use their straw-shaped mouth to slurp their food. They secrete digestive juices on their future meal as they land on it. And once the food has been liquefied, the flies are able to slurp it up. But the real danger lies with their feet, not their mouths. Flies spend a lot of time walking on all sorts of dirty things, which can be sources of disease. Studies have revealed that flies can transfer bacteria even if they're only in contact with an area for a short period of time. So, if you ever spot some flies hanging around your food, it makes sense to cover it. Or, if you're concerned about your health, even forget about finishing your meal. Here comes the next fact. Females of toe biters carry their eggs on their backs. That's false. In fact, they lay eggs on their males' backs. After that, the future father carries the eggs as a backpack wherever he goes. As sweet as it sounds, this sight is still pretty disgusting, and it might send shivers down your spine. And more bad news. Even though they're called water bugs, they can fly. So don't just watch out below because they can approach from the sky. Ugh. Next fact. 
Ants are one of the most dominant animals on the planet. True or myth? True. Collectively, ants alone contribute up to 20% of the entire animal biomass on the planet. These creatures are pretty ancient. They appeared around 160 million years ago and took over a wide variety of ecological niches. As a result, today they count about 16,000 different species with over 10,000 trillion individuals. Check this out. Butterflies taste with their feet. Myth or true? Sounds like fiction, but it's true. Butterflies have taste receptors on their feet to help them find their host plant and select food. Female butterflies land on various plants and drum the leaves with their feet. This technique helps them squeeze juices from the plant. Their legs have spines with receptors, helping them to detect the right match of chemicals in the plant juice. And once a female butterfly finds the proper plant, she lays eggs. Also, both male and female butterflies step on their potential food to sense the content of dissolved sugars. Just imagine what human restaurants would look like if people were tasting with their feet. Next fact, butterfly wings are transparent. Does it sound real? That's true. Butterflies have the image of colorful and vibrant creatures. But strangely enough, their wings are transparent. They are covered with thousands of tiny scales, and these scales reflect light in different colors. But underneath all of those scales, a butterfly wing consists of several layers of chitin. It's the same protein that makes up an insect's exoskeleton. These layers are so thin that you can see right through them. Butterflies only live from two to four short weeks, and you can determine their age by the quality of their wings. With age, the scales begin to fall off the wings, leaving transparent spots. Fruit flies were the first living creatures to be sent into space. Myth or true? True! A long time before sending dogs or humans into space, scientists studied fruit flies' reactions to radiation and space flights. This helped to predict how space conditions and zero gravity might influence human beings because we share many genes with fruit flies. And after several decades of research, on February 20, 1947, fruit flies became the first living organism to go to space and return. Next fact, caterpillars have two eyes, myth or true? That's a myth. In fact, the majority of caterpillars have 12 eyes called stemmata. If you look closely, you can see six tiny eyelets on each side of the caterpillar's head. One pair of eyes is usually placed closer to the antennae. It's easy to believe that 12 eyes would guarantee excellent eyesight, but that's not the case. A caterpillar uses them to distinguish light and dark and navigate its way. That's why sometimes caterpillars move their heads from side to side. Maybe they just love rap music. But scientists believe that it helps caterpillars understand the distance between objects. A few species of caterpillars have between 10 and 14 eyes. But these are usually more primitive forms, which also have several features, making them different from other moths and butterflies. Scorpions can breathe underwater. Myth or true? That's false. Although scorpions are not very good swimmers, they can still store oxygen to survive underwater. And some species can hold their breath for up to six days. Scorpions can survive underwater thanks to the so-called book lungs, which actually look like a book. The pages of that book act like membranes that store oxygen. Since scorpions don't waste a lot of oxygen on dry land, they can just store the rest in their lungs. And once a scorpion enters the water, it has around 48 hours to hang out carefree. After that, it will need to come out of the water for the next inhale. And this cute little creature is called the Northern Pseudoscorpion. It's the breath-holding champion among scorpions. It can hold its breath for up to 17 days. Let's just hope it doesn't learn to fly. 
Well, it's that time of year again, spring cleaning. Making your way outside, you grab the duster and broom to get rid of all those cobwebs on your windows. They don't stand a chance this time. Removing one cobweb after the other, you suddenly notice some weird-shaped mud stuck under the eaves and porch. What's this? It suddenly dawns on you. These have to be mud dauber wasp nests. You're probably thinking there's a swarm of them around with so many nests being side by side. Luckily, mud dauber wasps are solitary insects. Whew! All those little mud huts are filled with paralyzed spiders. Sometimes, even up to 500 spiders can be trapped in these lockers, just waiting for the wasp young to hatch. If the nest has holes, it may indicate the nest is inactive or old, as mud dauber wasps create holes when they leave the nest. If you're not going to remove them, it's best to wait until nighttime when they're not as active. While they're pretty placid, if they feel threatened, they won't hesitate to sting. Looking like someone got halfway through building one insect and forgot what part came next, the mole cricket is one insect that really looks out of this world. With claws like a mole, a body of a cricket, and the head of a shrimp, this critter is like the platypus of the insect world. They're not venomous and will only bite if you trap them inside your hand. And if you really annoy it, it's got something else up its sleeve. The wings. They can spit a foul-smelling brown liquid from their body, just like a skunk. So just let them leave your home and there will be nothing to clean up. Rock pools are teeming with all sorts of plant and animal life. Sea creatures such as starfish, seagrass, hermit crabs, tiny fish, and all types of octopuses. If you come across this tiny blue-ringed octopus, it's best to leave it alone. It's flashing neon blue at you for a reason. This miniature octopus has a venomous bite that's a thousand times stronger than cyanide, with no antidote available. Don't poke it with a stick or try to pick one up. It's not worth the trip to the hospital or the morgue. Snakes on land are scary, but sea snakes are on an entirely different level. Found in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, there are about 50 different species of sea snakes, and they're beautiful as much as they're dangerous. Luckily, they don't seem to worry about us too much. The Dubois sea snake is arguably the most venomous snake in the ocean, with the big sea snake not far behind. Their venom makes a cobra's bite seem like a walk in the park. The venom of both these snakes is extremely dangerous. Good thing for us that their venom can take hours to cause any symptoms in humans. If they can bite through your wetsuit, that is. Now, if this fly lands on your arm outside, you might just scream a little. Hey, I wouldn't blame you. The scorpion fly, as its name suggests, has a curved tail that looks just like a scorpion stinger. But you can breathe a sigh of relief. This is only used for mating. It also has a long, beak-like head that's used to feed after stealing insects from spiders' webs. To find the perfect partner, they love to give the equivalent of a box of chocolates and flowers. Except theirs is saliva. Hmm, how romantic! If you happen to be in Africa, you might just miss this large bird if you're not paying attention. The shoebill will just casually stand still as you walk right on by. Growing up to 5 feet tall with an 8-foot wingspan, the shoebill sounds like an apex predator, though it's anything but. Known as one of the most slow-moving birds, almost statue-like, the shoebill just eats fish near the surface of the water, without a care in the world. This bird isn't afraid of humans at all. While they won't naturally come over to talk about the weather, they'll allow us to get close enough for some photos. Now, if you hear a small squeaking sound while you're in the garden, it could be a mouse, a squirrel, or a rhinoceros beetle is letting you know that you are too close. They love to make a racket when bothered. With a giant scary horn on top of their head, they might seem like they're able to defend themselves with it. But that's not possible at all. That's only to move leaves and sticks out of their way and to stop other males from coming into the female beetle's area. Not only have they got a horn on their head, 
but they've also got Herculean strength, able to lift 850 times their own weight. It's like you or me lifting 65 tons or 11 elephants. Hey, let's try it. Nah. Found mainly in China, the small tufted deer looks adorable with its tuft of hair. That is, until it turns around. Oh no, it's a vampire deer! Luckily, this animal doesn't want to taste your blood or wear a cape. Only males grow these during the mating season rather than antlers to fight over territories and female tufted deer. These fangs are more like elephant tusks than sharp teeth. Not only do they have fangs, but they're also known to bark like a dog and flee like a cat when they're scared. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red sky in the morning, sailor's warning. No one said anything about a red tide, though. The red tide is a toxic algal bloom that rises up from the seafloor after particularly bad storms. This algae looks a lot like spilled ketchup or rust in the water, but it's much worse for the life around it. Fish and marine life will try to escape once exposed to the toxic algae in their water. It's not particularly harmful to humans who are exposed to it. But if you eat seafood contaminated with its toxins, things can become a bit more serious. So if the sea is red, just stay out of the water. Some spiders love to show off with bright colors to show they're dangerous. Not the Sydney funnel web spider of Australia. This glossy black spider doesn't need theatrics to prove it's tough. These bad-tempered crawlers cause serious alarm when they decide to bite us. It can shut down our entire nervous system in as little as 30 minutes. Making their web in any shelter, like old logs, shoes, or even garden gnomes, the funnel web spiders like to live close to our surroundings for easy food. When they get tired of an area, they just leave their web behind and wander off to find somewhere new. <laughs> Perfect! Some say honey badgers don't care, and I think they might be right. When you're brave enough to take food away from a jaguar, lion, or hyena, hey, what do you got to fear? These tough relatives of the weasel aren't just ferocious, they're super smart. Known to even use tools to escape from enclosures, objects like rakes, stones, and mud just become things to climb for freedom. Aside from their physical similarities to the skunk, the honey badger also boasts a dangerous gland in its tail, containing a powerful stink machine. So they're tough, stinky, have extremely stretchy and strong skin, and to top it all off, they've got a strong immunity to scorpions and snakes. The best thing to do if you walk into a honey badger is to leave it alone. What chance do we have? Ever heard of the fungus strawberries and cream? No? What about its other name, the bleeding tooth fungus? This fungus isn't toxic, but tastes so bitter that you might think twice about trying some. When young and growing, this white mushroom appears to have red jelly coming out of its pores. This sticky liquid is sap that's pushed up from taking on too much water. The adult mushroom is just a boring beige compared to this. Underneath the mushroom cap, where its spores are produced, it has a tooth-like structure, just to make it even weirder. Tasmanian devils have a reputation for being bad-tempered when threatened by a predator, fighting other males, or getting a place at the table for dinner. They're dubbed devils because of the teeth-bearing, lunging, and one of the scariest shrieks you'll ever hear in the middle of the night. They'll also eat pretty much anything they can get a hold of, too. They don't habitually go for people, although they will defend themselves if they're cornered. With such a powerful bite, you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end. Good thing the Tassie Devils would much rather escape as well. Endless hot deserts seem lifeless at first glance. But among these sands, you can meet dangerous and sometimes creepy creatures. Some of them can only cause health problems, but some can stay in your memory forever. Let's get to know them, starting with dangerous ones and finishing with real nightmares. 
So, you're walking through a desert and see a big teddy bear with open hands. You understand that it's probably a mirage, but still, you come closer. You were right. It's not a plush toy, but a giant cactus. There's something strange about it. Thanks to some strange fluff, the branches resemble the arms of a teddy bear. However, this is not fluff, but thousands of thin needles, and they are the reason you shouldn't come closer. The cactus is called the Jumping Choya, or Teddy Bear Choya. It grows in the desert areas of Arizona and in the northern part of Mexico. Don't worry, this cactus won't attack you, but it will cling to your skin or clothes if you touch it. Such a fur coat protects the cactus from animals, creates shade, and saves it from heat. The lateral branches are the most important parts of the plant as they carry out photosynthesis and accumulate a large amount of moisture inside. So, despite all the danger, the cactus can be helpful for desert wanderers. And the danger here is needles. If you look closer at them, you will see they have the shape of hooks. One touch, and hundreds of thorns are already in your finger. It's pretty difficult to get rid of them and the needles cause unpleasant, painful sensations. But the coolest thing about this cactus is the way it reproduces. The plant clones itself in a new place. When animals and people pass the jumping choya and touch it, the cactus gives them a small piece of itself along with the needles. As soon as you throw this piece to the ground, it takes root and starts growing. The degree of danger is rising. The next monster from the desert is running toward us, and that is an ostrich. Many think these animals are cowards hiding their heads in the sand. You will most likely change your mind if you're unlucky enough to meet one. Usually, ostriches are not aggressive, but you should run if you come closer to their nest. On the other hand, you won't be able to do that because ostriches move at a speed of 43 miles per hour. You need a car to get away from them. They run and hit their enemy with their chests. There have been cases when ostriches attacked vans and caused significant damage to them. But the main danger these birds present is their powerful legs with sharp claws. They can deliver strong blows with them and even beat a prone opponent. So, yes, if you see an ostrich in the distance, go the other way. This small spotted lizard lives underground almost all the time in the arid deserts of the southwestern U.S. and northwestern Mexico. Sometimes, it goes outside to find lunch. It only seems cute, but in fact, it's a dangerous gila monster. Its thick skin protects the reptile from hawks, coyotes, and other predators. But its main protection is its venom. Snakes and spiders inject their toxins using long, needle-like fangs. The gila monster clamps down and chews the prey to spread the venom. And when it bites a person, it can keep its jaws closed for a long time. Getting rid of the animal is a tricky feat. People who have experienced the effects of the venom say it feels as if hot magma passes through the veins. Despite this, the lizard turned out to be useful for science. Doctors used its venom to create medicines for diabetes and obesity. The time has come. Now you're about to meet one of the creepiest creatures living in the desert. Be quiet and listen to the silence. Stand still. There's no one around. Suddenly, you hear some hissing coming from below. You lower your head and see it. A big yellow spider the size of a human palm with strong jaws and long legs hides in the shadow of your body. In horror, you run away from this monster, but it goes after you. It isn't easy to do it in this situation, but try to calm down. The creature isn't interested in you. It wants only your shadow to hide from the scorching sun. Anyway, it's better not to touch it. The powerful jaws of the camel spider can cause unpleasant sensations, to put it mildly. And, by the way, this creature isn't really a spider. Yeah, it belongs to the class of arachnids, but it's a separate species, Salpigid. It likes to bite. It's fearless and pretty aggressive. The spider preys on insects, lizards, rodents, and small birds. 
It can also move at a speed of 10 miles per hour. For their small size, this is very fast. You need to be a professional athlete to run away from it. Most often, you can find camel spiders in the deserts of the Middle East, but they also live in Mexico and the southwestern U.S. These runners are nocturnal and try to avoid the sun during the day, so they are always hunting your shadow. By the way, they got their name because they often hide in the shadows of camels. You won't hide from them during the day, but they will also want to come after you at night, especially if you make a fire. Solpugids always run to the light in the hope of eating something. Some species of these spiders make a hissing sound to scare their enemies away. Now, let's calm down for a second and leave the hot desert. We're going into the humid tropics of Tanzania. Under tree bark, fallen leaves, and in dark caves, you can meet one of the most terrifying creatures on Earth, a tailless whip scorpion. Imagine a big scorpion without a tail with a flat body that looks like it has been pressed by something. It's similar to spiders, but has no venom glands and can't spin a web. This monster is silent and fast, but the scariest thing is its two front claws, twice as long as the creature itself. Any prey it catches will never escape. Life in a dark cave has spoiled its eyesight, so the whip scorpion tries to avoid sunlight. During molting, it climbs up to the ceiling and slowly comes out of its old skin. Imagine directing your flashlight there and seeing small cocoons out of which pale spiders with excessively long legs crawl. If you really meet it, be calm and slowly go away as far as possible. Be careful. The flat scorpion can crawl under your clothes in a second and bite you in the stomach. And that's not the worst part. Okay, this is a joke. This pretty guy is one of the shyest and most harmless creatures among spiders and scorpions. It's afraid of you and will never attack. Many consider it beautiful and keep whip scorpions in glass terrariums. If you want such a pet, carefully watch it so that it doesn't run away from its house. If it happens, it will be pretty challenging to catch it again. In a matter of moments, it can get under your bed or go through gaps in the floor. Then it'll go to your neighbor's apartment through a ventilation system and scare people there. Okay, how about one more scorpion? It's not as creepy as the other creatures in this video, but it's the most venomous scorpion in the USA. This is the Arizona bark scorpion. The problem is that you can see it in the desert, in your home, or in the yard. These dangerous venomous beasts crawl into rooms and often sting people. One time is enough to cause pain, similar to a bee sting. But someone with an allergy may experience paralysis, breathing problems, and other health issues. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.